So you've got questions about fly lines and fly casting? Hold on, here we go. Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshick of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A episodes. And as always, friends, we greatly appreciate the questions. We get hundreds, literally hundreds of questions every day. As always, feel free to send them over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. If you send them over to admin at madriveroutfitters.com, we answer them every day, all day. It's an emergency, or you'd rather speak to somebody, which is actually still a thing. You can still do that. You can pick up the phone and give us a call. I wanted to get to a couple questions today because they are some questions that we get quite often. So, um, anyhow, Ryan Kerr from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ryan says, I have spun up a bunch of reels in my day, but it always seems like a guess on how much backing I need and can put on. Often I put the backing on, they'll go back and take some off when I try to put the line on and I run out of room. Any tips for adding the right amount of backing? Well, Ryan, this is a question that we actually get quite often via email, and I've got uh, two answers for you. First and foremost, check with the manufacturer's specs. The manufacturer will always tell you how much backing goes on a particular reel with a certain weight of fly line. Uh, you can check with the manufacturer or you can go to right to, Ma to madriveroutfitters.com and if your reel, if we sell your reel on our website, we'll give you the specs right there on our website. And then the second answer is to call us. You know, we've been in this business for 32 years, I think a combined 400 years in the fly fishing business amongst our staff here, and we will be able to tell you how much backing to put on that reel so you don't have to experiment and potentially waste backing. So along the same lines, uh, the pun was intended, good. Any tips for swapping lines so I don't just pull it off and try to keep it untangled? Well, yes, you need to get yourself some switch boxes, okay? Uh, we've shown you these before, and believe it or not, it's one of the best selling items in our store, and it's a great way that you can get the kit, and it comes with a crank handle. Apparently this is hermetically sealed, and see if I can open it up, but yes. Um, we sell them as kits, or you can buy the boxes separately and the cranks separately. I know it's really bad form to have the green box and a blue handle. I apologize for that. But yeah, just loosen the drag on your reel. Uh, you've seen me do this on the boat. You've seen me do it here in the studio. I probably have about 40 of these in my basement right now. They come with a little sticker so you can mark what line is on here. Loosen up the drag on your reel wind it onto this box and it keeps it from getting untangled. It's a great way to store it. I travel with these um, when I want to have extra lines with me just in case uh, conditions change or whatever. I decide to use a different line. Uh, you've got extra lines on your switch boxes. Um, you know, there should be a video right there where we originally showed these to you here in the studio. If you can't see that link, it's of course down there in the description below me. So you can check those out. It's called the Omni Spool Switch Box. You can check those out, of course, at madriveroutfitters.com. Uh, so Ryan goes on to love the videos. I've learned a lot of technical tips from them. Stopped by last time I was in Columbus and was excited to see the new space. So thanks again, Ryan. We really appreciate you being here and appreciate the support. And uh, watch your mail for a hat and a fly box. Next question is from Aaron Micken from Cedar Park, Texas. Aaron says, a similar kind of question, I have concerns on fly line storage, care, and treatments. I live in a warm climate and mainly fish fresh water. However, once a year I head to Maine and I'm able to fish salt water for stripers. On my recent trip, I bought a higher end cold water intermediate line for the tip, trip. It fits great, but my question is, am I able to store it and use it a year later? Omni spool, switch box, I rest my case. There you go, Aaron, yeah. Spool it right onto the switch box, label it as per what it is, put it away wherever you keep your fishing stuff, and then pull it out when you're ready for your trip next year to Maine. 
Another follow-up question I have is it may fall in the same category. Is there, is there or should I treat the different lines like saltwater, freshwater, floating, intermediate with a different line treatment? Or is there a one product that does it all? Um, no, and we have talked about this before, uh, but I'll be happy to cover it again. Floating lines are really going to require a, um, a particular type of cleaner and dressing. And of course, my favorite is the Scientific Angler's Fly Line Dressing and Cleaning Pad. Although um, another good one is the Loon Line It Up Kit. And it has a line cleaning tool and a line speed, which is a premium fly line treatment, which really makes your line slick. Um, I actually carry both of these with me, believe it or not. As you know, I'm a little bit uh, OCD about keeping my fly line clean and keeping it dressed. But you do not want to use these products on a sinking portion or an intermediate line. They have some flotation special additives that are going to be water repellent and to help a floating fly line float better. So you don't want to be using that on your sinking lines. And I apologize. Uh, we are actually out today as I went to film this video of a product called Loon Sink Fast. And Loon Sink Fast, I'm sure our wonderful editor there has now flashed up a bottle of the Sink Fast. Uh, I'm sure there's a link to a video that we've done about Sink Fast, about cleaning sink tip lines. But the Sink Fast, uh, what you do is you can use. Um, I've actually got one of these pads that I've labeled with an S with a marker and that's for my sinking lines and <clears throat> you spray a little bit on the spongy side you wipe down your sinking lines your intermediate lines the sinking portion and then you can finish up the floating running line or the floating head or the floating portion with your standard floating lines so no there is not one all-around product I carry several different products with me at all times but the good stuff for cleaning sinking lines and dressing sinking lines making them cleaning them and making them slicker is the loon sink fast again you can find it at madriveroutfitters.com and by you by the time you see this video we should have it in stock so uh, thanks for your question Aaron appreciate that and again get yourself and some Omni spool switch boxes and you can store those fly lines maybe for hundreds and hundreds of years. Maybe. To wrap things up today, a quick casting question. Damon Hambrock from Carmichael, California. Damon says, I am new to fly fishing. I noticed after one day of fly casting, I have little knots in the end of my tapered leader. What am I doing wrong with my casting that is causing the knots to form? Again, Damon, uh, we get this question a lot. Uh, we have certainly covered it, but I know we have a lot of videos and it's hard to wade through them. But uh, yes, you are doing something wrong and that is that you're coming forward too soon. It's also called creep, okay? And what you're doing is you're going back, boom, and maybe stopping, but then you are wandering forward prematurely. Uh, you may have heard this before. I call it premature evacuation of the upcast. So you're coming forward too soon, starting the cast from here when you should be starting from maybe even back here. Okay, so you're going boom and you're instantly wandering forward. Almost everybody does it. And I'm talking intermediate, advanced fly casters. Uh, people come to us to take lessons. Uh, people that have been fishing for 40, 50 years. And I'll point out that they're wandering forward too soon or creeping. Now this causes something called a tailing loop. And that is what is eventually causing those little knots in your leader to form. Um, Damon had sent this over uh, via email uh, maybe a month and a half ago and he and I communicated a little bit uh, thanks Damon for sending that over and we we talked a little bit I sent him back uh, a couple of responses and then he said what does it mean if I hear the sound of a whip behind me I have that happen sometimes and that's really Damon that's the same thing you're coming forward too soon and what may be happening is you're literally 
pushing the cast too hard from from here and not from here okay you're pushing it too hard and that is literally like cracking a bullwhip it's causing you to hear that whipping sound okay if you go back and we'll go back and watch our fly casting series i think we're up to about 14 15 episodes now I think there's a 16th on the way, and we're going to keep making them. But we have talked about this in the fly casting series quite a bit. Uh, but again, happy to answer it here. We still get this question a lot via email. And as always, we answer all questions, period. That snapping sound, that popping sound, as a retailer fishing flies, I love that sound. Every time you do that, you're snapping off a fly, and then you got to come and buy more, hopefully from Mad River Outfitters. But as a fly casting instructor, I don't like to hear that sound. So there you go, uh, Damon. Uh, appreciate the question. I'm glad we got it answered, but I wanted to share it with here on YouTube with all of our fine viewers because so many folks out there have those same questions. So there you go, friends. Another Q&A under our belts. As always, we appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss an episode. Hit that like button, that just makes us feel good. And be sure to stop on over at madriveroutfitters.com and show some support. Uh, we don't have sponsors, so we do rely on all of you out there to uh, keep this party going. We really love doing this. We love helping folks. Uh, customer service is what we do for a living. Fly fishing is what we love and what we sell. So as always, friends, we appreciate you, and please stay tuned.